Just till I get up, time is barely on my side. I don't want to waste what's left. The storms we chase are leading us, and love is all we'll ever trust. Yeah, no, I don't want to waste what's left. And I How are we doing guys welcome back to daniel bailey tv welcome to my review of wolves versus arsenal before i get into that i just want to remind you all to hit that like button it's so important it does help the channel grow so yeah please do hit that like button i would really appreciate it apologies as well this review wasn't done yesterday i'm traveling back from wolverhampton and uh, yeah by the time i got in i was just a little bit tired but yeah Big up to everybody who watched the preview as well. Um, really appreciate all your support. But yeah, Wolves, what a game. And it wasn't the best game, was it? Let's be honest. It was a little bit scrappy. But do you know what? I look at this game and I look at the result and I look at the performance and I put all the things together. And I think it's one of those games where actually we need to just focus on the result because this result was massive. You know, with Spurs dropping points, Man United dropping points. Um, yeah, listen, it's absolutely massive for us on Thursday to, to get the three points. And we've done that. And I felt that actually, listen, the, like I say, the performance wasn't fantastic. The performance actually was quite scrappy. Um, but at times we had to dig in and I felt we'd done that. We dug in. We got the result. Um we got another red card. I'm going to come on to that a little bit later. But I felt that actually defensively we were brilliant. And this is the issue with Arsenal this season and with us this season is defensively we've been great. You know, I think we've kept 11 clean sheets with this defence. And that's fantastic. When you figure at the start of the season, we were, le you know, in those first three games, we conceded nine goals, you know, uh, at Brentford, against Chelsea and against Man City, we conceded nine goals. But then since Tommy Asu's come in at the end of the summer and since we've got that settled back line, um, I know Tommy Asu was out for the Wolves game, but, you know, Gabriel, White, Tierney, all of those guys were fantastic. And actually, I think when you look at the defence, we've massively improved. It, the problem is offensively. The problem is our attackers, because our attackers aren't great, are they? Let's be honest. You know, Lacazette again on Thursday missed an absolute sitter. If, I think he missed a couple of sitters, actually, which he could have done better with. And it just, again, highlights the need for a striker. It highlights that in the summer, we've got to go out and get in to world-class strikers I don't even think we need just one world-class striker I think we need two and on Thursday highlighted that you know and then Eddie come on as well and I felt that listen you guys know my feelings on Eddie and Kerry I don't think he's good enough to play for Arsenal I don't ever think he should be playing for this club again but for some reason for whatever reason Arteta loves Eddie and Ketia. But yeah, listen, it's so important that in the summer we go and get that striker because, again, on Thursday we saw the best in terms of the Arsenal defence and then we saw the worst of Arsenal in terms of the attack. And I feel like if we can get our attack sorted, we've got a really good foundation to really kick on and build a team, especially... When you look at some of those defensive performances, especially on Thursday, I, I thought we were fantastic defensively. Like I said, I thought we dug in. Um, we needed to dig in when we had to. I felt we'd done that. Uh, when Rob Holding come on, he was absolutely fantastic. Again, I thought Cedric had a good game as well. Um, and I've not been Cedric Suarez's biggest fan, but I think on Thursday, he had a really good game. Gabriel, again, getting the goal, coming up with the goods. Um, 
And I think as well, in terms of other m- members of the team, other than our strikers getting goals, I think that we're going to have to rely on from now until the end of the season. We're going to have to rely on players, whether it be your Smith Bros, your Odegaards with Gabriel, um, Thomas Party, Granite Xhaka, Martinelli, Pepe. We're going to rely on all those guys to chip in with goals. We're going to have to rely on them to chip in with goals because, like I say, Lacazette ain't going to really do it. Like I said, he had a couple of sitters and missed it. And again, with Eddie and Ketia, you know, I can't see him bagging 10 or 12 goals from between now until the end of the season because we're going to need that, especially when you look at the games we've got coming up. We're going to need people to step up and score the goals. Um, we got a player sent off, uh, Gabriel Martinelli. I've got to be honest, it was a stupid red card, like two yellows. And I don't actually think it should have been two yellows. You can't give two yellows for the same passage of play. Like, honestly, you really can't. I, I think the referees just make the rules up as they go along. I think they just, when it comes to Arsenal, they just throw the rule book out the window and make the rules up as they go along. But listen, I could probably do a whole entire show on how shit the officials are in the Premier League. And I could probably go on for hours and hours because we know this season from bitter experience how crap these referees are. But it highlights a bigger problem because since Arteta has been in charge, we've had 15 red cards since Arteta has been in charge at Arsenal. Now, I know this is a young team. And we have to be a little bit patient with these players and they're still developing. They're still gelling as a team. But if we have aspirations of getting in the top four, you cannot be picking up these amount of red cards. The the amount that we're getting, you know, we got four red cards in the last six games, I believe. I, I, I think I saw a stat somewhere that said, yeah, we got four red cards in the last six games. Now, we can't be doing that if we have aspirations of finishing in the top four. We need 11 players on the pitch. And, you know, I actually joked about it on Thursday and I said that um, soon we're going to be celebrating keeping 11 men on the pitch more than we are celebrating scoring a goal because it's becoming the norm, isn't it, with Arsenal just to get a player sent off. But, yeah, we need to address that and Arteta needs to address that. He needs to not come out with these bullshit excuses about how you know, never understand the officiating and all this crap. Listen, I'm not going to disagree with him because the officiating is crap, but it's his job to actually find the solution and it's his job to actually tell these players and convey to these players that you can't be picking up red cards because, like I say, we're in a top four race and we're well and truly in the top four race. You know, this win against Wolves was absolutely massive for that. You know, those three points... If we get top four this season, we're going to be looking on this game and going, do you know what? These three points against Wolves away were massive. And we don't need to be spoiling that by keep getting red cards in the games that we've got coming up. When you look at the games that we've got coming up, we've got Brentford. Then we've got Wolves again at the Emirates. Then we've got uh, Tottenham, Chelsea, Liverpool. Those games are going to probably decide whether or not we finish in the top four. So you can't be going down to 10 men against the likes of Tottenham, Chelsea and Liverpool. You know, you need to be keeping 11 players on the pitch and we need to be keeping 11 players on the pitch because if we don't and we're against the Tottenham, we're against the Chelsea or against the Liverpool, we're going to come unstuck. And we've seen it before, haven't we? Liverpool earlier in the season, you know, we went down to 10 men, didn't we? We had a we had a player sent off. Um, and again, with Man City uh, at the Emirates, we had a player sent off, Gabriel. So, you know, it just goes to show that when you're playing against the top teams, you need to keep 11 players on the pitch. And I think at the moment, it's a real issue for us, keeping 11 players on the pitch. And it was a bit gutting for Martinelli. Me personally... I don't think it was a red card. I don't think it should have been a red card. I think he should have just given the yellow card and then just sort of waited. You can't give two yellow cards for the same passage of play, in my opinion. But listen, I'm not a Premier League referee. I'm just a fan that goes to watch uh, my team play. So listen, it is what it is. The red card, 
we have to take it on the chin and we move on to the next game. Um, hopefully it gives a chance as well. Listen, I love Martinelli. I think he's fantastic. But it might give a, a bit of a make way for Pepe to come in and hopefully to get his opportunity to get his way back into the first eleven. But yeah, listen, listen, it is what it is. We move on. We're without Martinelli now for the Brentford game. So Arteta has got to find a solution for that front three because it's going to get disrupted. Um, like I said earlier, defensively, I thought we were fantastic. I thought we were really, really good defensively. I, I, I've Listen, like I say, this performance wasn't fantastic. It wasn't the greatest by any stretch of the imagination. But defensively, um, Cedric, Ben White, Gabriel, Rob Holding, when he come on, Rob Holding, when he come on, he made nine clearances. That is like fantastic, isn't it? And I've not been Rob Holding's biggest fan. I, I've always said that I don't think Rob Holding is good enough. But on Thursday, he was fantastic. Um, and uh, yeah, listen, we dug in. We got the three points. Like I said uh, earlier in the video, it's more important that we focus on the fact that we got three points than rather analyze the performance over analyze the performance too much because we can over analyze the performance and if we do that then we're going to be picking holes in it because there are a lot of holes there are a lot of things that we could improve on there was a lot of things that we could have done better but i think we should focus on the fact that we got those three points for once this season when other teams have slipped up around us we have took advantage of teams slipping up because we for, for many a times this season we've had teams slip up and we've failed to take advantage but this time we took advantage and like i said those three points are going to be massive going forward in the top four race and we are in a top four race you know we're massively in the top four race there's no questions asked i think when you look at the games we've got coming up it's going to be tough but I think we're well and truly within the top four race. I don't think, um, I don't think, you know, we're out of it by any stretch of the imagination. When you look at the fact that we've got two more games in hand over Man United, um, you know, they they're struggling at the moment. Then you look at Tottenham. I think they're going to struggle as well. They've got some big games where they can drop points. But we need to take advantage, don't we? We need to take advantage of the fact that teams are slipping up. And when teams do slip up, because look, when you look at Man United, they're going to slip up again. When you look at Tottenham, they're going to slip up again. When you look at West Ham, they're going to eventually fade away. Um, but we need to capitalise on that. It's all well and good teams slipping up, but we have to capitalise on the fact that teams slipping up. And when they do slip up, we need to be right there to pounce and take advantage. And we can only do that by winning our games. But it's massive, guys. It's absolutely massive, this three points. I can't stress enough how important these three points were. If we'd have drawn the game, it it was just going to, you know, the, the old problems would reoccur again. And when you factor in as well that we've had a shit January, we've not won a game all January, um, we've only scored one goal in the month of January, then throw into the fact that we had a shit transfer window. It was so important this game to get three points. And we'd done that. Like I said, it wasn't pretty. It wasn't great. It wasn't vintage Arsenal by any stretch of the imagination, but it was a good solid one nil to the Arsenal. And that is what we've needed. And I think again, it's just rebuilding that confidence because, like I said, January has been an awful month for us. You know, with players going to AFCON, with the red cards, with the fitness issues, um, it was just a horrible month. So to get three points to kick off the month of February was fantastic because we've got some big games ahead. You know, Brentford is not going to be easy. That's not going to be an easy game. I know we're at the Emirates, but again, it's still not going to be an easy game. Then we've got the return game um, at the Emirates against Wolves. Again, that's not going to be easy. We've seen on Thursday what problems Wolves could cause. And they they caused us a few problems. So we've got to be on our game 
at the Emirates. And then, you know, we've still got those rescheduled um, Tottenham, Chelsea and Liverpool matches to play. So, yeah, it was just important to kick this month off in the right way. And I felt we did that. I felt we were absolutely fantastic defensively. It's just, if I was to take away any worries, then I actually think the fact that we're struggling to score goals is probably my one biggest worry right now. We need to find a way of getting goals from other players in the team. Because if we're solely relying on Lacazette and we're solely relying on Eddie and Ketia to come up with the goods week in, week out, then I think we're going to be in real trouble. Let's be honest. So we need to find a way of getting the likes of Martinelli, getting the likes of Smith Rowe, getting the likes of Odegaard to, to come up with the goals. And maybe Pepe, you know, bring him back into the side and get him scoring might be the solution temporarily just until we can get to the summer and until we can see where we are, whether we finish in the top four or not. And then we can go in and real invest in the striker positions because we do need two strikers. I know a lot of people say that we need one striker. We need two strikers because both our strikers in the summer are going, uh, are going to be out of contract. So we need to sort that out. But listen, guys, listen, that was fantastic game on Thursday. thought it was brilliant that we got the three points and we just move on to the next game. Don't we, we move on to Brentford in over a week's time. We, um, you know, we move on to, to that game and then obviously we move on to Wolves after that. And uh, yeah, great start to the month of February. Fantastic start. Three points to the Arsenal, one nil to the Arsenal. It's not very often we say that, although it is becoming a more frequent scoreline under Arteta. Listen, guys, as I said before, do remember to hit the like button. It is so important. It does help the channel grow. I really appreciate it. Lots of you watch my preview, but not many of you hit that like button. So let's see if we can get a like target um, of 30 likes this video. So please smash the like button. It's so important. Apologies as well that this review is pre-recorded. The preview was pre-recorded, but I'm trying to practice my pre-recorded video skills as well as doing the lives and with things being so busy for me at the moment, it's just a case of having to um, not always in a position to do lives. But big up to everybody that supports the channel. Really appreciate you all. Listen, we move on to Brentford in a week's time at the Emirates. It's finished. Arsenal won. Wolves nil, which was fantastic. Away at Molyneux. Difficult place for us over the years, but we went there. We come away with a 1-0 win and we move on. Take care, guys. Come on, you gunners.